in this program is separate food and love so that food can become food and love can become love. We're going to look at what's at the root of these beliefs and these issues and these conflicts with food so that we can make the separation and so that food can become in fact a source of delight, of thrill, of pleasure, of joy and that love can become the same. In this program I'm going to talk to you about what I've learned in the almost three decades that I've been teaching this and of course working with myself about this because I learned about all of this through being a compulsive eater myself. I teach workshops and I teach retreats and in those years with the tens of thousands of people that I've worked with I've learned certain principles, certain guidelines and certain practices. I'm going to teach you the principles. I'm going to teach you the path of working with emotional eating. And most importantly, or as importantly, I'm going to teach you the practices. How to put all that you learn into use in your day-to-day -day life. What I want to tell you is that this is a path. This is a gradual unfolding. It's a gradual awakening. Transformation of your relationship with food is absolutely possible. I do not have one doubt, not one, that this relationship with food can become a source of pleasure and joy and ease in your life. I do not have any doubts that you can do this. What I know is that it takes patience. What I know is that it takes time, that it takes love, that it takes a willingness to be kind to yourself, tender with yourself, curiosity about why you're doing what you're doing. St. Francis de Sales said, what we need is a cup of knowledge, a barrel of love, and an ocean of patience. What I would recommend for all of us is that we have that knowledge, we have that love, and that we have that patience. With that patience, if you stay with this, your relationship with food will unfold. It will open. The thing that you consider to be the worst mistake, your greatest source of suffering, can become itself your greatest illuminator, can become the door to your healing. And so it shall. So I want to start off by telling you a bit about myself and how I got to be talking to you about emotional eating. It wasn't always this way. In fact, for 17 years, I would say that I was insane about food, about my relationship to my body, as crazy as anybody I've ever met. And that's saying something since I've been doing this work for 27 years and I've met tens of thousands of people. I started dieting when I was 11 and I went on a kind of normal diet if you can consider any diet a normal diet. I stopped eating more than two pieces of bread and I cut out things like cookies and ice cream and I just ate fruit instead and I lost weight and I was quite thrilled about that and everybody was thrilled about that. My mother was thrilled, my family doctor of whom I was terrified was also thrilled and I figured gee if I can lose weight just kind of cutting out two pieces of bread and ice cream cookies why not be more radical why not just cut out a whole bunch of things so the next diet I went on was when I was about 14 and I 
decided I was just going to eat one hot fudge sundae a day and no other food. So I ate for about a week or two one hot fudge sundae a day, and I lost weight because that's all I was eating. And you could probably lose weight if you were just eating one hot fudge sundae a day. But, of course, there wasn't a lot of nourishment in one hot fudge sundae a day. So I decided to go on a more nourishing diet. This time I took diet pills. And I went to a doctor who was dispensing purple pills, which I took twice a day for four years. Four years I was addicted to those pills. I actually didn't realize that they were amphetamines, that they were speed. All I knew at the time was that I had lost 20 pounds during the first month. And I was frightened of gaining any of that weight back. So I stayed on the pills for three years and 11 months after I had lost weight, frightened that if I went off of them, I would gain weight back. I couldn't sleep. I was nervous and agitated all the time, but I didn't care because I was thin. In those years, the only thing I cared about was being thin. It was the most important thing in my life. I believed that the cause of all my unhappiness, and of course when you're 15 and you're 16 and you're 17, life can seem very dramatic and very, very, very unhappy. I believed that if I were thin, I would be happy. So at 19, I stopped going on diet pills. My roommate started flushing them down the toilet and I started more radical diets. I started the 1,000 calorie a day sugar diet. I went on the fried chicken only diet. I went on, when I was 21, the coffee diet, Shasta cream soda, and cigarettes diet. I did that for three entire weeks. And as you can imagine, I did lose a lot of weight. I wasn't eating anything. I was just drinking coffee and Shasta diet, cream soda, and smoking cigarettes. And I thought it was a great diet. When I started eating again, I gained weight, but I soon discovered fasting. In those years, I went to India, and I went for reasons of getting in touch with myself. However, one of the things that people did in India was fast for spiritual and holy reasons, and I decided that though I didn't want to fast for holy reasons, I figured that if I fasted, I would be really thin. So I went on weeks and weeks of lemon juice, cayenne, and maple syrup, and I got thin again. I kept on going up and down the scales. I could gain 10 pounds in a week quite easily by overeating and then lose 10 pounds the next week by utterly deciding that I wasn't going to eat. When I was 25, somebody gave me a book that told you how to be a breatharian. And a breatharian is somebody who lives on light and silence, doesn't actually eat any food, metabolizes air pretty much. And I decided this sounded great. So I started becoming a breatharian by limiting myself to 150 calories a day and jogging four miles a day. I got very, very, very thin as anybody who was eating 150 calories a day and jogging four miles a day would get. I still, however, looked in the mirror and saw fat thighs, round face, flabby arms. I saw a body that was not attractive, that was in fact fat. I could not look at myself and see a thin body. I could not because the eyes through which I was looking were what I call fat eyes. So it didn't matter what I looked like. It only mattered how I felt. And as I'll explain later on, when you lose weight, you don't actually lose the reasons you ate. And so losing weight doesn't change how you feel about yourself unless you actually begin to work on how you feel about yourself and the beliefs you have about yourself. In those years, I didn't know any of that. I kept believing that being thin equaled being happy. I kept believing, as you probably do, that I am what I weigh. And if I weigh less, and the less I weigh, the more valuable I'll be. At 82 pounds, when I was literally anorexic and couldn't really eat anymore, I decided that I'd had enough. 
And again, as I'll tell you later...